The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. I get you something like maybe a nail to bite? <laughs> Lucy, brace yourself. We're without a car again. Old Grover broke down on the way home. Same old trouble. Did he go chipakata, chipakata, chipakata? <laughs> he gave one last chipakata, and I thought he was going to roll over on his side and die. <laughs> his timer isn't timing right, so you'll have to give the garage $50. Me? $50? Viv, the car's timing may be bad, but yours is ridiculous. Now, Lucy, you know our agreement. I make the payments on the car, and you pay for the gas and the repairs. Where am I going to get $50? That's your problem. Oh, boy. Oh, I know. You could give me an advance on next month's rent. You know I haven't got a cent. My alimony check isn't due for two weeks. <laughs> Where would I find $50? Well, you could look around. Look around like, say, uh, under your mattress. No, that money's for the next car payment. And I would... <laughs> <laughs> You've been snooping under my mattress. I was not snooping, I was dusting. Since when do you dust between the mattress and the spring? Well, I'm a very fussy housekeeper. Oh. Viv, I have a marvelous idea. I now, don't want to hear it. She said firmly clutching her $50. Now, Viv, you phone the garage, tell them to go ahead and fix the car, and nothing we'll pay do for them with your money. Nothing doing. Now, Viv, nothing. now listen, the first thing Monday morning, I'll go to the bank and I'll ask them to give me an advance on my allowance, and I'll give you your $50 back. You know how Mr. Barnes' doll is. That old tightwad wouldn't advance you a new calendar. Yeah, but now wait a minute. Yesterday I went by the bank and his secretary said that old penny-pinching Barnes' doll was no longer with them. Where'd she say he went? I don't know. I was so busy whistling and applauding, I didn't even hear her. <laughs> oh, who's gonna handle your trust fund now? The new president, Mr. Theodore Mooney. Oh, I saw him from across the bank and he looked so sweet. Lucy, you can't tell if a man is sweet from clear across a room. Well, now you could tell the Barnes doll was sour clear across town. <laughs> come on, Viv, call the garage. Oh, come on. Mr. Mooney, Mooney, it's such a nice name. Mooney, Mooney, so sounds like money. <laughs> Oh, yes, Miss Tanner. Uh, well, you know you have an appointment with Mrs. Lucy Carmichael. Carmichael, Carmichael, Carmichael. Uh, oh, yes, right here on my calendar. Yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> Mr. Mooney. Yes, 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 well, yes. Uh, well, about Mrs. Carmichael, well, there are some things you should be warned about. <laughs> <laughs> Told about. Thank you, Miss Tanner. That won't be necessary. Mr. Barnstall already filled me in. He left me a little memo. 27 pages. 27 pages? Single space. I could hardly put it down last night. Apparently, this woman will stop at nothing to get money from the bank. You know, it says here uh, she will threaten, wheedle, cajole, cry, implore, jolly, and even stage tantrum. Oh, it's true. Well, I think she will find that she has met her match in Theodore Mooney. <laughs> Here she is. Thank you. Mr. Mooney? Yes? I'm Lucy Carmichael. I believe we have an appointment. Mrs. Carmichael? Mrs. Mrs. Carmichael. Mrs. Carmichael. Please sit down. Sit down. Are you coming? Oh, yes, thank you. Mrs. Carmichael, I have certainly been looking forward to meeting you. 
Well, I've certainly been looking forward to meeting you, too. You know, Mrs. Carmichael, we have something in common. You flunked arithmetic, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Our sons are in the same class at school. Oh, well, it's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, I don't want you to look on me as your banker. Think of me as your friend. Now, if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Well, as a matter of fact, there is a little something you could do for me. Anything at all. Uh, I'd like to have $50. I see. It's that simple. All I have to do is advance you $50 on your next month's allowance. Yes, it's that simple. <laughs> Could I have it? No. I told Mrs. Bagley that you were sweet, but... No. <laughs> no. But you don't even know why I need it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Look, Mr. Mooney, I don't think you understand. You see... We um, took the $50 for the next car payment to pay for the repairs. So if you don't give me $50, we're going to lose the car. Oh, my, that was bad planning. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's your final answer. It is. Mr. Meany, you're a Mooney. I mean, Mooney, you're a Meany. Are you going to let me have that money, or aren't you? No, I am not. Mrs. Carmichael, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you can save $25 out of your allowance, I will match it with another $25. How could I possibly save $25 out of my allowance? Economize. Put yourself on a budget. Do away with all your, your fripperies. We have already economized so much that our idea of a frippery is day-old bread. <laughs> that is my offer. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. a whole lot truer. Now, Deb, there's no need to worry. Mr. Mooney is going to give me $25 if I can show him that I can save $25 out of my allowance. You save money out of your allowance? Well, you sound like I never have. You haven't. Well, then this will be the first time. Oh. Now, I have lots of plans for economizing. Look at this. What's that? That's a do-it-yourself barber kit. <laughs> be kidding. Not at all. From now on, it's free haircuts for everybody. <laughs> Jerry, come here, honey. Come on down here. Lucy, you don't know anything about barbering. It says right here, anyone who can comb hair can cut hair. <laughs> that doesn't mean a thing. Anyone who can dig a hole can fall in it. From now on, I'm going to cut your hair at home. Not your only son. Get in the chair. Oh, Mom. Get in the chair. Well, sir, haven't seen you in my shop for some time. Now, how would you like your hair cut? By somebody else. Never mind. All the other barbers are busy. Now, sit around. Sit up straight. Jerry, stop wiggling now. Come on. Jerry. I got out your door. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. Hi, Arnold. <laughs> Come on, I want you to meet my mother. <laughs> Mom, Arnold is a new boy in our class. Well, hi, Arnold. Jerry will be right with you as soon as I cut his hair. Come on. Arnold, would you like to take my place? <laughs> well, 
Now, uh, you would be something of a challenge at that. <laughs> Wait, would you like to have me cut your hair, Arnold? Do you give lollipops? Well, do you wiggle? No. I give lollipops. <laughs> Get up there. Here we are. Thank goodness. I'll be out in the yard, Arnold. Yeah, well, you're next, buddy. Now, sir, let's see what we have here. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you think of that uh, football game Saturday? That, uh, it's quite a team they have there, don't you think? Uh-huh, I'll bet you that team, bet you that Notre Dame can make the World Series. <laughs> Cowboys and Indians? Yeah, I'm always one of the cowboys. Well, next time, be an Indian. <laughs> I can't stand it any longer. I've got to see what you're doing to Jerry. Oh. <laughs> Lucy, you've changed his face. <laughs> Vivian, this is Arnold, a new little friend of Jerry's. Uh, would you get him a lollipop, please? I ought to get him a lawyer. <laughs> Here you are, Arnold. Uh, wait a minute, honey. Where do you live? Uh, maybe I better drive you home, have a little talk with your folks. I'm not going home. I'm going to meet my father at the bank. <laughs> father? Bank? New boy in school. Your name wouldn't be Mooney, would it? Sure, Arnold Mooney. Arnold Mooney. <laughs> nice work, Lucy. Well, I got to go. Uh, uh, Wait a minute, what'd you like to stay for dinner or maybe the weekend or, uh, or or spend a couple of months? How fast does your hair grow anyway? What? <laughs> Goodbye, Arnold. Hello, finance company. <laughs> oh, now, Viv, maybe it isn't that bad. We aren't sure that Mr. Mooney's gonna be upset about Arnold's hair. We aren't. <laughs> we are. <laughs> First thing tomorrow morning, I better get down to the bank and apologize. Yes, you better, because if you lose that car, you're gonna lose a good tenant, not to mention your best friend. <laughs> talk to you. Oh, no. <laughs> it's you, the scalper. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, I came to apologize. Well, I was hoping you'd come here to hold us up. Then we could at least shoot it out. <laughs> now, sir, I don't blame you for being a little upset. Upset? I'm not upset. Now, just get out of here and never darken my vault again. But you just got to give me a few minutes to, to explain. Now, Mrs. Carmichael, you... Joe, don't, don't! <laughs> Why did you do that? Because we are not leaving this room until you give me time to tell you my side of the story. We are not leaving this room until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. What do you mean by that? We are locked in. We're not. We are. But, but, but that's impossible. Oh, no, it isn't. It's a time lock. It works automatically. Oh, dear. Oh. Somebody must have the combination. Somebody on the outside must know how to open it. Oh, of course. Why didn't I think of it? Somebody can open it from the outside. Well, of course. Who has the combination? I have. <laughs> Boy, talk about bad planning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That is a new lock. 
I sent a copy of the combination to the president of our New York office. They must be getting in touch with him right now. Oh, good. Oh, yes. Now, let's see. He'd get that combination this morning because I mailed the letter last night, you see. Yeah. I made a special delivery, registered, return receipt, request... Re oh, no! <laughs> well, I... I guess we're stuck. Well, we'll just have to make the best of it. At least we can talk. You know, this will give us a good chance to get to know each other better. <laughs> I know you better than I want to already. <laughs> Time is it? How long have we been in here? Three hours and 37 minutes. <laughs> it's 6.15. 6.15? Why did you have to tell me that? Well, you asked me. <laughs> yeah, but now my stomach knows it's dinner time. I know, I'm hungry too. Oh. Wait, I forgot my groceries. Groceries? Yeah. What? You... Take an <laughs> Bottle brush. Beef. 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 Yeah, beef. boy. Knowing you, I bet you didn't bring a can opener. No, I didn't. Oh, wait, we're in luck. Macaroni. <laughs> uncooked macaroni. Well, it's all we've got. Gee, I've never eaten uncooked macaroni either. <laughs> Hi. Not bad. Have some? Never. <laughs> Must you chew so loudly? It's a little difficult to chew uncooked macaroni softly. <laughs> Guess I'll save the rest for later. Thank goodness. Oh, you want to play poker? Poker? Do you have a deck of cards? Well, they're children's cards. They belong to my little boy. I bought them at the store today. It's a game called Who's in the Barnyard? <laughs> Who's in the barnyard? Yeah, but I think we can adapt them for poker. Here, give them a good shuffle and I'll clear off the table. Uh -huh. I'll, uh, I'll take two. One, two. I'll play these. <laughs> I'll bet five thousand. <laughs> Five thousand it is, and I'll raise you oh. twenty thousand. <laughs> I'll see you <laughs> and raise you fifty thousand. Fifty thousand it is. I call. <laughs> I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Three piggies and two bunnies. <laughs> Pardon me.
That is still the bank's money. Oh, I forgot we were playing for fun. <laughs> oh, I am so hungry. How, how, how was that macaroni, anyway? Well, plain but filling. Uh, yeah. I, uh, could, could you let me have just a little? I'd like to try it. Sure. All right. Here you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Won't you join me? No, I'm saving mine. Oh. Here, I'll divide it. Oh. Some for you, some for me. All right. Mm -hmm. One for you and one for me. 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 Uh, you're taking all the big ones. <laughs> one for you and one for me. 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 One Your macaroni was safe. Now, Mr. Mooney, I know you for your real self. You are a macaroni snatcher. <laughs> Just give me one little bit. A taste. Who's rich now, Mr. Mooney? Please, just one piece of macaroni. One delicious, mouth-watering morsel. We divvied up and you ate your share. Mrs. Carmichael. You are toying with a starving man. I demand a portion of your provision. One more step and I'll shout. I'll uh, yell. Yeah. I'll scream. Uh, I'll uh, eat. Uh, I'll uh, eat up all the macaroni. That's what I'll do. I'll eat all the macaroni. Don't, don't, don't do anything rash. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got an idea. What am I bid for this nice, fresh, plump piece of macaroni? Five dollars. Five do I hear ten? Yes, I hear ten back there. Where? <laughs> Do I hear... Fifteen, fifteen. Fifteen, fifteen. Do I hear twenty? What's that? Oh, the owner has instructed me that I should sell these as a matching pair. Uh, now, do I hear twenty dollars? Do I hear twenty? Twenty. Uh, twenty. Do I hear thirty? Thirty. Do I hear forty? Forty. Forty. Now, gentlemen, have you inspected the quality of this macaroni? The roundness, the texture, and the nutrition. Each piece in itself is a meal. Uh, Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars sold to the hungry-looking gentleman below. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Fifty dollars, please. <laughs> Fifty dollars. Tell me exactly how this thing happened. Oh, are you a reporter? Yes, I am. Oh, well, actually, it was all my fault. I did the dumbest thing. You see, I wanted to talk to Mr. Mooney in private. So without realizing what I was doing, when I got in there, I closed the door. Oh, yes, oh I did, no! I closed the door like that. Mr. Mooney is still in there. Oh, no! Yes, he didn't come out. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! 